today I wanted to go through this picture with you. It's still taped to the board. See with the sun it's a little bit light here, you can see it better. And the reason I made this picture, I put it away again, you can see it in a moment when we actually start painting it. But the reason I made this picture is to show how many different ways there are to actually um, portray, on this case a flower, but to portray something. There's so many different ways um, to make something and sometimes your art doesn't have to be perfect to show um, what you actually want to convey and what you actually want, to, the story you want to tell. So for example, with a rose, if you just have a circle with some scribbles in it and like really lovely watercolour brushes and colors your mind will see that and it makes that abstract you know portraying of a flower into something that it recognizes as a flower so your mind is a really beautiful thing and it, and it, it can create something that is quite abstract into something concrete um, also I think I'm going to talk a bit more about perfectionism um, when the video actually starts and I think sometimes we let perfection perfectionism holds us back I think when we um, when we make a drawing the um, just the act of drawing sometimes can be enough to get the benefits of, um, of the relaxation and the creativity that starts flowing without focusing too much on the final piece so sometimes it's nice to pick a simple shape pick something that you love so in this case I picked a rose and start making that in various different ways and just enjoy the process and try out different shapes and forms in which you can show off um, you know, the beauty of that flower. So I wanted to show you just different ways of how to do it. And um, well, let's dive into it. I'm going to start the video and you can see how I made this from scratch and I'll, we'll talk through it uh, when we keep going. So as you can see, I have set up and ready to start this painting. You can see I did a very light sketching at first. It's just a bit of um, pencil on the paper and it helps to know in your mind's eye where the different flowers are going to be. I often paint straight away with paint, but for many of us it does help to make a little light sketch before we start painting, just so we don't get distracted and that we know where uh, what our composition is going to be and where all the different flowers are going to appear on the page. So as you can see, I've started with the red flower at the top and it's a very stylized, uh, simple um, depiction of a rose. It doesn't have really many individual petals. It's a very simple shape and simple form and um, anyone can make this. It's, it's so easy and so fun and it looks beautiful if you make a whole bouquet full of these round flowers. Or um, if, uh, if you use it to decorate, say, stationery, or you write a letter to put a few of these flowers around the corners. So there's many ways in which you can use something like this to um, just make normal pieces just a little bit more special or a little bit more fun. Something else that I wanted to talk about today, and I already hinted to it earlier, is perfectionism. Perfectionism is shown to not be good for us at all. Even though the, um, being a perfectionist in our modern society is often seen as a quality that we should strive to, the problem with perfectionism is that it can wear us down and it can stop us enjoying things that um, we should be enjoying instead of letting the weight of trying it to be perfect uh, hold us back. Perfectionism is when you set yourself such high standards, an often unattainable standards, that it's so easy to fail them. And it's almost unrealistic to actually match these standards. That, uh, and that if you don't actually hit the standards that you've set for yourself, you feel deflated, you feel maybe a little bit sad about it, or it gives you anxiety, or maybe um, yeah, it makes you feel really bad about yourself in other ways. And that feeling is actually not very helpful.
as you can see, we've moved on to paint our second flower. Uh, it's a very different style from the first one. Even though it's the same flower, it's still a rose. We look at it from a different angle and uh, I'm using much more detail to actually show all the different petals and the different textures of these leaves. Well, the first one was just a round, um, very simple shape. This one has much more uh, edges and it's much more uh, precise and detailed. Even though I'm still using wet on wet techniques, so I've made the paper a little bit wet where I use the paint. The, um, here you can show, you can see that there's much more detail in this in this little painting. When we make a painting like this, there's so many examples on, for example, Instagram and on other social medias where people make the most beautiful, um, amazing flower paintings. And sometimes it's so easy to compare yourself to what others have made. But don't forget that everyone started as a beginner at first. No one just knew how to do these things straight away from the first time they tried it. And there's so much joy and um, it's so amazing to go through the learning process and actually enjoy the failure and enjoy the, the fact that you're learning something new and it isn't easy but with hard work and dedication and practice you'll get better and going through that process of seeing yourself slowly improve um, there's so much to learn and it's so fun to see yourself go through a stage of improvement if you'd be perfect at everything you did the first time around you tried it wouldn't life be a bit boring i think so When we make a painting like this, where we paint flowers, there's so many different ways of painting a flower and showing off a flower. And I think so there's something in there for everyone. You can make a really detailed, um, a really detailed painting with lots of little petals, and um, where you show all the nerves of the leaves and all the all the little intricate details but you can also make something a bit more stylized and a bit more maybe a bit more blunt or more robust or something that is a little bit more um, abstract maybe and both are equally beautiful and if you it depends a lot on what in what setting you want to use the flower how much time you have to spend on making something and what the final result is that you're aiming for Sometimes it can be really good to pick something really precise and focus on the details and um, really spend a lot of time analyzing what something looks like and then try to make it as lifelike and precise as possible. But other times it can be really fun to analyze the bigger shape of something and just make an impression of that object of a flower or a house or an animal but make an, an impression of that object in an expressionist and uh, fun way where the emotion is more important than the lifelike, um, lifelike details of that object that you're actually painting. I hope this makes sense. Cause, so what I'm saying is that um, it's good to practice something that maybe is not your first instinct to make it. Maybe if you always paint really detailed, try and make something a bit more abstract and try and make something that you know focuses more on the color or on the larger shapes or focus something that you know where you can use the contrast of the color to um, yeah, to give it a really fun and vibrant sort of setting. And I bet if you paint quite regularly that you will see other things in your painting that um, yeah, that you will see other things in your painting come forward because of trying something else and looking at it from a different angle. So I've started to paint the third flower of this collection now. And as you can see, this again is a very, very different style from the other two. It is uh, much more stylized again, so maybe a little bit more similar to the first one than it is to the second one. And you can see the rose from above. So you can see all the individual leaves that fold into each other. 
And I really love how the middle of a rose um, is really tight and has leaves really close together and really folded really neatly into each other. And then towards the outside, they become a bit more loose and a bit wider. And that's the sort of effect that I try to create in this painting. Um, it does help to make a little sketch here, which I did as well. Um, just so you know where the, where the different leaves are going to be. But you can also just start in the middle and put start with a little circle and then start folding all these um, leaves around it and make it wider and wider the further you go out. So you can make it as detailed in the middle as you want or keep it quite open as I've done. And um, yeah, I actually really like this. It's almost like a stamp of a rose. Um, and I think it looks really fun and yeah, really pretty and it's very quick to do. And you can really use your watercolors um, to your advantage here. So you could even say, put some uh, darker colors in the middle and some lighter colors to the outside or um, paint some leaves, some green leaves around it once you're done with the inside. And you can really play with it and make it a really fun and playful little painting. What I love about water paint is that being a perfectionist is almost a bit impossible because the water has a mind of its own. Water just flows in places without um, you know, asking you for permission to go it, to go there. And it just flows in places to um, yeah, and moves the painter. And sometimes it can be a bit unpredictable. And once you accept that that the paint can be unpredictable. Actually, sometimes these fun little accidents that you have, because, you know, it's spattered somewhere or the paint run to a different area of the paper and created a big blob of color there. And once you, once you accept the fact that the paint does that, it becomes so much more fun. And actually these shapes that it Create accidentally can sometimes be the most beautiful shapes in your painting because it looks natural and not forced. For me, watercolor painting is almost an analogy with life because you can't always control everything and you can't always um, know what to expect and you don't always know what the outcome is of things that you do. And for me, watercolor painting is just that you don't always know what the outcome is of what you're making. Naturally, the more experience you have, the more, it, the more easy it is to predict the outcome. And that's the same in life. The older we get, the more experienced we get. And with actions we take, it becomes easier to know what the results of our actions are going to be. But still, there's always an element of unpredictability um, in this work, in watercolor, as well as in life. And I think because of that, it makes it such a perfect medium to do mindful painting with. I really love watercolor. I love how you can create these really soft, light um, areas of the paint where you blend it with lots of water. And I love how you can make it more opaque by layering it up. Sometimes you can see the layer underneath shine through. And there's so many different effects that you can create that way. And I absolutely love them. I'm really curious to hear what your approach to painting is and if you prefer something a little bit more abstract or something a little bit more detailed and um, what is your favorite and what do you prefer making? I'm planning to create at least one of these videos every month and uh, maybe more when I get the hang of it a little bit better. And I'd really appreciate it if, um, if you enjoyed this, if you give me a follow. So um, yeah, subscribe to my channel and hit that little bell and you'll get updates whenever I post something new. And um, I hope to see you again soon. Thank you.